Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom. Galvatron. Now I know what some of you are thinking. How in the world do I have a Galvatron still in the package if I've already done the Galvatron shoulder fix and cleaned off the battle damage? Well, when I got my first Galvatron, he came in a box like this. It was crushed and smashed. And when I took the insert out and saw the backing where the card is supposed to be, that's how it looked. This thing was not factory sealed at all, and it actually, it looked like a return. Somebody had bought this figure, something was wrong with it, maybe the shoulders, and they sent it back to Amazon. Now, I immediately posted pictures of this crushed box on my Facebook page, and one of my buddies said I ought to contact Amazon, and maybe they'd at least give me a partial refund since I bought a used figure, a return figure, instead of something brand new. So I reached out to them and what they did was send me a replacement Galvatron that arrived today. But I have to send the other one back so I can't keep both of these Galvatrons. So chances are by the time you're seeing this review, this one is already on the way back to Amazon. But I am gonna take the opportunity to compare this Galvatron fresh out of the package to the one that I've done the shoulder fix and removed the battle damage. So real quick, let's go over the packaging. You've got Galvatron right there in that window and Galvatron in some fantastic Kingdom artwork. They're in robot mode and cannon mode. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom. Let's see, back of the box, we got Galvatron in robot mode, cannon mode, and the Matrix there on the chain. More fantastic Kingdom artwork on the side, and that's pretty much it. So now, without further ado, let's get this Galvatron opened up out of the packaging and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Galvatron all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions that, as usual, are very well illustrated and very easy to follow. He also comes with his trademark orange particle cannon, and this is actually in two pieces, the barrel and, I guess, this is the emitter. So, put that to the side. He comes with this matrix of leadership on a chain, not a big fan of the chain. I think maybe we could have got something a little bit better, but it's still pretty cool that it was added. Now the matrix, you can pop that off. It just pegs right onto the chain. It's got the little peg hole right there. There's the peg on the chain, and there you have the matrix. Now this is exactly the same mold that was used for the Optimus Prime and Hot Rod matrix. Though the Galvatron Matrix has a painted blue center where Optimus and Hot Rod had the transparent plastic. Galvatron also comes with two of these blasters that look exactly like his ship 
from Transformers the movie. I mean, check that out. Look at the detail on these. That is awesome. And it's really cool that Hasbro made these blasters. And you can actually combine them both together. You've got a peg and a slot right here that match up to one another. Just set them there on top. So now you have this mega blaster. But we'll get into more of this blaster later on. Now let's take a look at Galvatron himself. Now this Galvatron here is one of the ones that have the shoulders misassembled. You can tell by looking at the ridges and sculpted detail right there on top of the shoulder, not to mention it has this big gap. The actual top should be this part right here where it's nice and smooth and there is no gap. So let me get Galvatron all straightened out here because I actually have a version that I have fixed the shoulders on. So get these standing side by side, get them to line up where you can actually see the difference with the shoulders. I mean, it's not a major difference, but you can see right here that the misassembled one is slightly shorter than the fixed version. I think the fixed version just looks more anatomically correct. These, the misassembled ones, they just hang too low, at least for me. I just find the repaired version more aesthetically pleasing. Now, there's been quite a few people that say, hey, just take the misassembled Galvatron, rotate the arm, bring the arm down, and then rotate at the bicep, and now you have the smooth section here on top, and the arms are now where they are supposed to be. But that leaves a big silver pin right there on the front of the figure. Now I know you can buy some plugs online that actually go inside those little pinholes to fill them up, but I thought, you know, if I'm gonna spend the money on those plugs, I'm just gonna buy a tool set and fix my Galvatron shoulders. Now if you missed my Galvatron fix, I'm gonna put a link to that video right here in the corner. Now another issue with having the pinhole here in the front is with the repaired version, the treads here on the back can actually peg in to the pinholes. Now it kind of hinders some of the posability, but it kind of keeps the treads out of the way as well. So that's another reason why I fixed mine. So let me go ahead and get this Galvatron shoulders rotated back to their misassembled out of the box position. Now, another thing I did with this Galvatron is I removed the battle damage. Taking a look at the fresh from the box one, you see he's got this light blue battle damage here up top, right there on the side, all over the chest here, on the wrists, and there's some gray battle damage on the legs. All I did was take some 91% alcohol and a cloth and I was able to rub all of that battle damage off, and I think that looks so much better. But once again, it is completely up to you. Some people, the battle damage, the shoulders, it doesn't matter. I want to stress, no one is holding a gun to your head to fix or mod your Galvatron. It's your figure. Do with it as you please. Now, if you are interested in cleaning the battle damage off your Galvatron, I'm going to put a link to that video right here. Now, for the rest of this review, I am going to use my cleaned up version of Galvatron here. So now, let's get to the accessories. Let's get Galvatron's particle cannon. And I like this. This looks really good. Very reminiscent of Generation 1 with the translucent orange barrel. He's got the back section here that has a lot of nice detail. And there is paint, if you can see, right there near the ends of the barrels. That looks really, really good. Now, I try to angle mine just right because I don't want to see those holes right there. So I put those on the bottom. Now, what's cool about Galvatron is they have gave him two different ports to plug the particle cannon. You can plug it right up here on his bicep which is very reminiscent to the G1 toy or some animation cells. You can also plug it down here on his forearm. 
which he's also shown in animation having. So it's like in the animation, they couldn't decide if they were going to leave it on the bicep or the forearm. I like to keep mine on the forearm because it's very reminiscent of Megatron. Now you've got the Matrix. They can actually put over his head like so, just like he was in the 1986 movie after he captured it from Ultra Magnus. So you've got that look going on. And of course you have the ship blasters. Now each ship blaster here does have a handle on the bottom. So you can place that in either of Galvatron's hands like so. Or as I showed you earlier, you can combine them into a mega blaster. And I like that. That is really, really cool looking. But to be honest, I think I'm going to display these somehow as ships instead of blasters for Galvatron. Now, another option, if you don't want to use them as blasters, is these will peg into Galvatron's back. Now, according to the instructions, see this big slot right here along the bottom? Those actually peg in right there on Galvatron's back. So you can peg one in there and one here on the other side. So you've got that look going on. But in my opinion, I think those stick up way too high. What I like to do is there's conveniently another little slot right there that you can also peg in. So let me move those down. And I like that. That looks a lot better. It hides the guns and they actually conform pretty well to his backpack. Now, as far as articulation is concerned, let me go ahead and remove all the extra accessories. Galvatron's head is on a ball joint. He can look up and down, do a complete 360. These pylons up here on his shoulders, they can move, so you can angle those according to however you want to give him a pose. Now, I showed earlier that you can lock these treads into the pinholes on Galvatron's arms. That way, you can still give the arms a 360. You can raise them up. You can raise them down. You can bend the bicep. It's actually a double bicep bend, but when you go to twist the bicep, there is a bicep rotation. The tread is attached to the lower section of the bicep. So when you turn the bicep, that tread's moving too. I wish they could have got that somewhere else because it kind of messes with certain poses. Like you always want Galvatron, you know, aiming his weapon out like so you're going to have to manipulate that tread accordingly. So, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great either. Galvatron also has waist articulation, and the legs can go out and in, forward and back. There is a knee rotation or thigh rotation and a knee bend. I am not going to forget the knee bend on this Galvatron figure and ankle tilts so he's got a lot of great articulation and man he just looks so good i keep popping these chest sections out they just they don't tab in the greatest when you go to manipulating galvatron around now i'm kind of doing this all in reverse i got thrown off by showing off the shoulder fix going into some of the details look at galvatron's face i love that that is a great Galvatron face. He's got the purple Decepticon insignia right there on his chest, the red abs. I mean, this is very cartoon accurate. He's got the red sections there on the knees. I love the lines, kind of the organic look for the upper legs, the paint applications here on the shins, the boots. I mean, he just looks great. And look at the tread detail. This Galvatron figure is awesome. I'm really happy I cleaned mine up. It really pops for me. So now let's go ahead and get Galvatron transformed into his cannon mode. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the particle cannon and go ahead and collapse the fists into the arms. Now you've got this peg right here on the forearm. You're going to fold up and attach to that slot right there on the shoulder. Now if you had the Galvatron without the arm fix and flipped it around to where the pinhole 
is facing forward, you would have to turn the shoulders back to the way they were when you got him out of the package. Now, let's go ahead and fold up Galvatron's heel spurs, like so. Go ahead and turn the legs in like this, and you've got these purple sections here. Go ahead and flip these up and around. They will go all the way around the leg, and you got this little section right here that's going to tab in right there. So get those tabbed in, and then just bring the legs together, and they will actually peg together. Let's see. There we go. So you got Galvatron looking like this. Now what we're going to do is take this back section here, bring this down and out. This section right here, you want to pull this away from Galvatron's back, and then you're going to bring the head into this section here. You're going to flip up the whole chest area, like so. Let's see. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. You want to bring these sections down. This is what I've been fighting with this whole review. Bring these down, like so. Now you can bring Galvatron's head all the way back. Bring the chest section forward. And then you just want to bring this back section with this port and just snap this into place. Just like so. Now, I'm going to take this section, bring this up. Actually, you're going to bring this section down. So this is going to go down. This is going to go forward like so. And then you're going to bring Galvatron's legs up. So this little purple section is going to line up with this purple section right here. Bring this up and snap it into place. It will click. It's got some little tabs right in there. So if you get that just right, I have transformed this figure so many times. And of course, once you're on camera, that's when it screws up. There we go. Got that pegged in. You're going to take this little section here on top and move this back like so. Now, you've got Galvatron's arms and chest section. You're going to bring this down. Actually, let's see. Move these out of the way. These little hip flaps. I should move those out of the way earlier. Now you're going to bring these sections down and see this little hole right here? It's going to line up and peg into this peg right there. So bring that down. And on the other side, the hip flaps are now going to peg into the shoulder pylons. Do that on either side. Now you're going to bring the treads up and around Galvatron's elbows. And now you're just going to angle these accordingly. Take the back section, or the feet, bring these down, and then flip out this rear section. If I can get my fingernails here. Just like that. So now we have Galvatron's cannon. All we have left to do is take the particle cannon, separate the barrel from the emitter, Plug the barrel into the front right there and take this section is going to peg right into the back. And there we go. Galvatron's space cannon mode. And I love this. This looks really cool. Very reminiscent of the generation one toy. It's got the treads. It's got the wheels right here. So it actually can roll along though not very good, but still, it's an option. I love the translucent orange barrel. It just really calls back to his G1 self. I mean, this guy looks awesome. Now, if you want, you can fold this section out right here, rotate the arms up and out of the way, or the treads, and now you have Galvatron's handgun mode, or submarine mode <laughs> so the original galvatron toy you could have a handgun mode so it's not an official thing it's just me being goofy so let's see let's get galvatron all fixed back but yeah i think that looks really really good now you can also utilize galvatron's accessories in his cannon mode take the 
chain with the matrix and you slide that over the barrel and there is a peg right there at the bottom of the chain that you can peg in right there to the top of the chest so it locks that in place that's not going anywhere and as far as the ships are concerned you've got these slots right here on either side of the cannon you can peg those ships in let's see so i've got one and let's peg in this other I don't know why, but these pegs are hard to get lined up just right. There we go. So you can actually position the ships on either side of the cannon like that. It's a cool option, but nothing I'm really a big fan of. Now, if you are wondering, if you do not do the shoulder fix, does that affect transformation at all? No, because the shoulder fix really has nothing to do with the position of Galvatron's arms as the tank treads. So there you go, there is Galvatron in cannon mode. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Galvatron with Generation 1 Galvatron, Titan's Return Galvatron, Kingdom Cyclonus, Studio Series 86 Scourge. And of course, I had to get this shot of Galvatron and his minions. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Galvatron is a fantastic figure, especially, in my opinion, after doing the shoulder fix and cleaning the battle damage off of him. He is now my second favorite figure in the Kingdom line, next to Cyclonus. Cyclonus still has that number one spot. Now, as I said, cleaning up Galvatron is completely up to you and your preferences. My preference is I love my Galvatron looking like this. For some of you others, may not have a problem with your Galvatron looking like that. So, as I said, no one's holding a gun to your head to do the fixes that I did to mine. So there you go, guys. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Galvatron. And oh yes, almost forgot. It wouldn't be a Galvatron review if I didn't forget something. He does have wrist rotation. So yes, once again, I forgot some articulation with a Galvatron figure. So does a Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Galvatron belong in your collection? Absolutely, this is a fantastic figure, especially if you do the fixes, in my opinion. But nonetheless, this is a great Galvatron figure and one of the best from Wave 3. I've had some bad luck with Wave 3 so far. I thought Rhinox was not that good of a figure. My tracks came missing a wheel. Granted, I haven't even taken Wingfinger out of the box yet, but this figure is awesome. I love the Generation 1 throwbacks, the 1986 movie throwbacks with his cannons that look like the ship that he had. It's just really, really cool. And this figure is highly, highly recommended, whether you do the fixes or not. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. And if you're in any position to help out the channel, I offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I also have a Patreon page. And I am getting so close to hitting my goal of 10,000 subscribers by TFCon in October. I think I only have 250 subscribers left to go. Once again, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!